Tobias Werner and I'm happy to welcome you at my channel TW Retro. Today we want to talk a bit about problems building my own eggbot. What is an eggbot? An eggbot is a little robot that paints eggs. Well, and because very soon it will be Easter, it will be our topic today. Like other people, I downloaded the Sphere robot from Thingiverse and thought, well, that couldn't be a big problem. A CNC shield in version 3, an Arduino, some code and then the eggbot would print some eggs. Well, I have been so wrong. I tried to raise the pen and the program did absolutely nothing. I tried a lot of different plugins for the eggbot, but none of them really worked. And so my eggbot was about 3 years in an IKEA box till I talked to a good friend of mine who already managed to get his eggbot working. When I talked about my problems, he just laughed and told me that he absolutely had the same problems I had. But he didn't know, unfortunately, how to solve it. About two days later of analyzing the problems, I had fixed them and my first egg was painted. After I showed my results at Facebook, directly some people wanted to know how I was able to get my SphereBot up and running. And so I decided to make a video about it. In the following minutes I will tell you why the problems exist and how to solve them. There are 7 important steps to get your eggbot up and running. So we start with point number 1, the right wiring of the motors. The cables are always in the following order. The first one at the top is black, then it's green, blue and red. This one is X direction and the X connection cable goes to the motor on the back that holds the pen. The next cable down there is the Z-axis and it also is from the top black, green, blue and red. It is connected to the motor on the side that rotates the egg. It is also very important that you use a capacitor between GND and RST. GND means ground and RST reset. Because if you don't use it, the pen will fall after your print and you will get a dot per color on your prints. I used a 50 volts 10 microfarads capacitor for that. GND stands for minus and so the minus of the capacitor is set to ground. The plus of the capacitor is connected to reset. To connect the servo to the CNC board, you take the signal cable of the servo and plug it into Y-step. It can be orange, white or yellow. The black or brown cable always is minus and the red cable is always plus. And so the black cable is connected to GND, that's the short form for ground, and the red cable of the servo is connected to plus to SV. The board has to be powered between 12 and 36 volts. Please be sure that you connect minus and plus to the right position. The next step is setting the jumpers in the correct direction into the CNC board. For one sixteenth step, you need to set all three jumpers in a vertical direction like it's shown in the video here. One, two, three under the capacitor and then again one, two, three in a vertical position. And so we set up three jumpers at Z in a vertical direction and three jumpers at X also in a vertical direction. The slot A is left free because it isn't used at all. And slot Y also is left free because Y axis is used here for the servo that lifts up the pen. Now we come to the third point that we install the stepper drivers correctly. At the CNC board version 3 the potentiometer has to be on the lower side. So that our eggbot works correctly the potentiometer needs to be configured. When everything is connected you search for a ground. You can use for example the USB port as a ground. And then with the plus of your multimeter you go to the potentiometer. And it should have about 0 0.6 volt. The next one also is about at 0 0.6 volts. If it is too low then you take a screwdriver. Rotate it a bit. I rotated it a bit in the clock direction. 
and then you get more bolts. So this is too much. We get back a bit. 0 0.56 is a bit too low. Now we have 0 0.6. So I only turned it a bit. This was uh, not even a millimeter. And yeah, now the voltage is absolutely correct. The problem is that the drivers, stepper drivers, can't do more than 1 amps. So maybe you have better stepper drivers, but in my case, only one amps is good for the stepper drivers. If you have a different CNC shield or a different driver, then please have a look at your manual. Step 4. Tell the software of the Arduino to use the right output. This was a quite tricky step. I first had to figure out why the Arduino was behaving that strange and was not doing what I want him to do. After some time I found out that the CNC board we use has different outputs configured than the original ActBot. I changed it and the Arduino did move for the first time. You can download my configuration and flash it directly to the Arduino. And so we get directly to step 5. For flashing an Arduino, you need to have a computer, the Arduino, a USB cable and the right software. And the right software is called Arduino IDE. It can be downloaded at arduino.cc. You choose Windows 7 or later. Sorry, I just want to download, I already donated. The download takes quite a while and installing is quite easy. We start the program, say agree. We install everything, so we install the program, the driver and so on. And after some time it's installed and we are ready to go. The next step is to download the software to tell the Arduino what to do. The link for that is in the description. Just download the Arduino final.zip, extract it and open the Arduino.ino. I didn't program this all by myself. But what I've changed here was that I defined the stepper motors and the servers to the correct pins. As I already said, the pins of the original ActBot is connected different to the ones on our CNC shield. Please watch out that you have nothing attached at your Arduino while flashing. I flashed my Arduino and nothing changed at the settings. I tried to flash it a lot of times and no changes at all. Then I unplugged my CNC board and the changes worked. Yeah, if you for example have a CNC board connected to the Arduino, it might happen that the software can't be flashed. So just unplug it for now. Now we need to know what port your Arduino is connected to your computer. Yes, it's the USB port, I know. But in Windows our Arduino gets a port number. To find out what port is used in Windows, we press the Windows key type in device, choose the device manager and under ports we can find our Arduino and it's connected to COM10. So at the Arduino IDE the first thing we do is to choose the right board. Under Tools, Boards, Arduino A4 Airboards, we choose the Arduino Uno. And what's very important, we choose the right port. And we already saw that it's COM port 10. Then we click on Verify and the Arduino IDE checks if there's some error in the code. No, there's no error in the code and so we can upload it to the Arduino Uno. And after we press at the right arrow, we upload the file. And after about 30 seconds, it's complete. Step 6. Installing Inkscape and set up the plugins correctly. The next step I did was to install Inkscape and the Arduino plugins. Inkscape is a very good vector graphics software that is free to use. It is normally used to create, for example, logos for companies and so on. 
In our case we will use it with a plugin to paint our X with the Spiro board. Because not all plugins and versions work together, this was quite a time consuming task. After some time I found a portable version of Inkscape with the latest plugin already configured. You also find a working portable version of Inkscape in the description. Just download it, extract the zip file and have fun. But I guess some of you want to know what I did to get it running. When I launched the plugin the first time it showed an error. But this error was more than I got from all these other versions. If you scroll down a bit at the error you can see that the program can find the hardware with the VID and PID. What is the VID and PID? These two IDs are called the hardware ID. Every hardware you plug into your computer, for example a USB mouse, has its own hardware ID. And with this ID, Windows knows what driver should be installed. Well, at least when Microsoft knows this hardware. Of course this hardware ID was the problem. The program searches for an original Eggbot and not for an Spiro bot that is based on an Arduino Uno. When you look at the VID and PID of the Arduino, it is completely different than the one of the Eggbot. Also, if you plug in the Sphero bot, you will see at the hardware manager that it's not called Eggbot, it is called USB Serial CH340, the name of the Arduino. I solved the problem by finding the line in the code where the program searches for the original Eggbot and changed it to make it compatible with the Sphero bot. If you go into the folder of Inkscape, then Share, then into Extensions, then there is a file called ebb underscore serial.py. And if you open it with Notepad++ for example, in the line 62 you can see that the software searches for a device called iBotBoard. Or as an alternative for this name it searches for an VID and PID that also doesn't match with our Arduino Uno. I changed the name of the hardware and the hardware ID and so the plugin was able to find the Arduino. So I made it Arduino compatible. As already said, you just need to download the Inkscape zip file and extract it to your download folder. After that it's directly ready to use. So we start Inkscape and the last step I did is to load a file into Inkscape and print an egg. But to complete this video I will show you that in detail. Now the last step is to print an egg. In Inkscape we go into Extensions, Eggbot, Eggbot Control and the first thing we do is to raise the pen. Therefore we go into Manual, raise the pen and say Apply. And so the pen is raised. The next thing is that we walk the egg. I hope it is centered but we can prove it by walk the egg. Yeah. This looks quite good. So we want to print an egg with only one color first. We insert the color. So we choose a picture, for example this traditional one. And after that we again go into extensions, eggboard, eggboard control and say plot. The second print we do will be a multicolor egg. So we choose the stormtrooper and then on the right side we can see the different layers. The different layers will be different colors. So for example the black one here and the gray one. At the prints we should know what color we choose. So our first color will be gray and the second will be black. We go to extensions again, Eggbot, Eggbot control. And then we don't go to blot, we go to layers. And the first layer we do will be the gray one. 
So, I insert my egg. I take my gray pen. Insert it. Raise the pen before. And then go to layers and say print. Well, this takes some time. After the eggbot is finished printing the first layer, change the pen. In this case we switch to black. At changing the color, please don't be too harsh at pulling at the pen. You want the pen holder to stay at the same position. But no worries, it will hold its position when you don't pull it too hard. You choose the second layer and say apply. With that you can create really colorful easter eggs. Our print is ready. Thank you for watching the video. If you like this video, please give a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. So you always will be informed about new videos. So all I have to say is happy painting, goodbye and see you soon. And after that, we go again into ex uh, and after that we again go into extensions <coughs> you also find a working portable you also find a board a cnc a cnc shield in version 3 an arduino if you like this video, please... Uh.